My name's Adam Bates, I'm the Research and Development Assistant here at the National Lobster Hatchery. My background is in marine biology. I came to the National Lobster Hatchery as originally as a research student and then later as a full-time member of staff here on the Lobster Cultivator Project. So we work with partner fishermen and wholesalers all around Cornwall and we get buried hens, the, the female lobsters with the eggs from them and bring them to the hatchery. Um, the eggs come in various stages. They, when they're laid initially, they're, they're very dark black at the early development stages and progress through to a bright red colour just before they're about to hatch. It can take up to nine months for those eggs to develop, so depending on what stage they come to us, the, 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 the hens, the females, can be with us quite some time. Um, but once they spawn, uh, they spawn over about a week and those tiny eggs hatch into larvae lobsters. So Lobster Cultivator Project is a two-year in-house research project uh, aimed at stabilising the production, uh, so the release, the growing and release of post-larval lobsters. It's looking at three key aspects, it's water quality, uh, nutritional inputs, larval feed, and uh, egg quality. So the project builds on research that has been done and is ultimately hoping to improve practices and methods that we use here to identify reasons for instability in the production process. So a process we're trialing with the Lobster Cultivator Project is screening lobster hemolymph. If you take a small sample of hemolymph, you can measure the concentration of sugars, which gives you a BRICS index. That will tell you various things about the condition of the lobster, whether or not it's malnourished, it's under stress, likelihood of whether or not it's going to molt. So if we can take a measurement of the hen's hemolymph and relate that to the survival rates of the larvae, it'd be a very useful tool for us for predicting our survival rates in the hatchery. So we use a number of processes to monitor water quality here at the National Lobster Hatchery. So we need to monitor salinity, pH, and the dissolved products in there. We're particularly looking for waste chemicals, so ammonia, nitrate, phosphorus. Uh, those are indicators of organic pollution. Uh, those can lead to blooms and uh, algae growing in the system that we don't want to have. We change the water with fresh, clean seawater. We also conduct periodic tests. We've detected 92 different active chemicals. We're looking into to see if they have any particularly hazardous effects to the lobster larvae and also investigating whether or not there's a pattern with any, of, any events that we see here happening at the hatchery. The larvae are very small and going through rapid development and physiological change. A busy peak season we can have 10,000 larvae in a morning which is um, quite, a, quite a lot to handle and I'll spend uh, about two weeks in the larval system floating around and going through three molt stages. After two weeks they go through a, a final metamorphosis, their, their fourth uh, molt, um, where they start to look more like a, an adult lobster. In the wild they'll be seeking out the seabed and, and suitable habitat to, to spend the rest of their lives. Uh, in the hatchery we transfer them through to the aqua hives where they're given their own little compartment in the tray where they'll spend the next two months before you then go and release them onto a suitable habitat, either on a shore release where we just go down to the sea edge and release them, uh, or with uh, fishermen. We often go out with them, uh, have a little shoot, goes down to the seabed so we can pull them down, make sure they go down, uh, or with scuba divers. A really good way is to give them to scuba divers who can take them directly to the seabed. The lobster cultivator and hopefully build upon the knowledge we already have and develop new techniques that can further increase our output. And we work with several student projects this year and hopefully next year as well. Constantly developing new feeds, new processes and new ways to monitor the system here and improve the technique for hatching lobsters. So as the lobster hatchery expands and we uh, increase our production year on year, it's important for us to be able to accurately predict the numbers of larvae that we, we can release and best manage the resources that we have. As a charity, it's important to maximise everything that comes to us. So being able to spot any areas that we can prove is, is vital.